Pascal Merasas. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to apologize from the very beginning as I have to leave after my speech. Sorry about that because I have many meetings in the parliament. But uh, be sure that I will be informed of uh, what uh, had happened here during the day from my colleagues here and my friends. Um, I want to welcome you all here warmly to this conference and thank you for participating in the discussions on this important topic. I would particularly like to thank all the speakers, chairs of workshops and panelists for their contribution today. I would also like to start uh, to thank Euler for organizing this conference on such an important issue. It is great to see representatives from the main EU institutions, re national and regional governments, and representatives of patient organizations, healthcare organizations, scientific societies, and representatives of important stakeholder organizations here today. The topics we will be discussing today have a widespread impact which makes it essential to share ideas and collaborate in order to find sound solutions. As a member of the European Parliament, I'm very proud to host uh, this event. The topic of today's conference is the increasing interconnection or even integration of healthcare provision in Europe and the challenges this development still poses for patients, healthcare providers and health professionals. In the past decades, European integration has resulted in some significant and highly commendable achievements, the single market being the first and foremost of these. The situation is, however, different in the health sector where the development of the single market has only recently started to materialize. The rights of patients to get treatment abroad and be reimbursed for that the possibility for providers to offer health care services across borders or the free movement of health professionals, the topics of this conference are only some of them. Nonetheless, and despite the improvements in these areas in the last years, a number of issues still prevent many EU citizens to get treat treatment abroad, many health professionals to work in another member state and many healthcare providers to offer their services in other member states. There are different barriers to the further development of the single market in the health sector, including cultural, practical or technological ones. But there are also political and economic reasons that to some extent make the development of the single market in this area more difficult. One thing is sure, Broadening the scope and possibilities of care for patients in the single market, particularly those suffering severe chronic conditions, conditions thus, such as rheumatic and musculoskeletal diseases or RMTs, and facilitating the mobility of health professionals in the EU will result in very important benefits for both individuals and societies. The question is then how to facilitate and stimulate the further development of the single market in the health sector, preventing at the same time their possible side effects on health systems, as for instance the lack of sufficient health professionals in less affluent regions or countries. This is one of the reasons for which events like the Euler Conference is very important. It brings together people with real experience in dealing with the single market in the health sector, decision makers and stakeholder organizations to discuss about the challenges and possible solutions. Last year I was also honored to host, to host and speak at the Euler conference in the European Parliament and in this venue. In that occasion the topic of the event was the access barriers to healthcare faced by people with RMDs and other chronic conditions, from lack of, sp of specialized health professionals to fundamental problems of coverage. Last year's conference highlighted just how severe the barriers of access for people with chronic diseases are. 
Access barriers as a major political issue that urgently needs to be addressed by the EU and the Member States in the years ahead. Although individuals suffering from these diseases are affected to a disproportionate extent, access barriers have significant wider implications that have to be considered and addressed. As competencies for health care primarily rest with the Member States, it is first and foremost the Member States who have to take action and make a determined effort to reduce access barriers. The EU, however, also has, a, also has a crucial role to play in coordinating such actions of Member States by, for instance, promoting best practice, supporting research and providing other support where possible. Access to quality health care is a topic of utmost importance which can only be addressed through a collaborative approach that includes the EU, Member States, regions as well as stakeholders. The Euler position paper on access to health care which is based on the results of the last year's conference and will be presented in this session a bit later is therefore vitally important as it well identifies the main barriers that people with RMDs and other chronic diseases face in their everyday lives when trying to get solutions to their health problems. But the paper goes further than that. It proposes relevant, concrete policy recommendations to us in the EU institutions as well as to national and regional decision makers. There is a necessity to take action on the recommendations and I therefore call on all policy makers to make healthcare access a priority. Today's conference is to some extent a continuation of last year's event and continues the theme of access barriers. A way that access to quality healthcare can be proved for people with RMDs and other chronic diseases is through the opportunities offered by the increasing interconnection and integration of healthcare provision in the EU. Among others, these advancements, advancements have laid the foundation for this continuously improving interconnection and integration. Firstly, patients now here have the right for, to receive treatment, treatment in countries other than the ones where they live in, thanks to the cross-border health dire directive adopted in 2011. Secondly, the right for health, health, for health service providers to offer their services across borders. And thirdly, the creation, many years ago, of a border-free labor market allowing health professionals to work in the EU member states. This has made patients as well as health care provision more mobile within the EU. But has, but has also created new challenges which we also need to take into account. These developments have provided the setting for a more integrated provision for European healthcare, which not only has the potential to improve the quality of life for European citizens, but also has the capacity to positively transform the way patients with RMDs and other chronic diseases seek treatment and find specialists that are familiar with their specific condition. Although these prospects are instinctively appealing and should be welcomed, we have to be aware of the challenges we encounter along the way. When it comes to the mobility of health professionals, for instance, there are challenges that have to be tackled if we want to ensure that the benefits of increasing integration are to yield the anticipated positive results. As I already mentioned, one example of such a challenge is the phenomena commonly known as brain drain, that is the migration of highly skilled professionals from less to more affluent countries and the potential inequalities this could create. As we know, the financial crisis did not affect the European Union equally, with some member states being more strongly affected. As the workforce costs account for the largest share of health expenditure and represent a significant part 
of government budgets, they have been a popular target of spending cuts. It is, however, of course, not in Europe's common interest to have an over-concentration of highly qualified health professionals in some countries with an under-concentration in other countries. This trend is also happening within member states as health professionals concentrate in more affluent regions. This development could potentially leave behind those who suffer from RMDs and other chronic diseases and therefore needs to be comprehensively addressed. A policy development that we have had for a few years is the opportunity for patients to seek health care in other countries through the cross-border health care directive. <clears throat> Although the directive is a welcome step, it is also still an area that requires our attention. Eurobarometer data shows that more than 8 out of 10 EU citizens feel uninformed about their right to access the to treatment abroad and merely 5% have taken advantage of their right to cross-border medical treatment, which is an increase of only 1% compared to 2007 before the directive supposedly made, made it easier. This lack of awareness and uptake certainly needs to be addressed. Likewise, worryingly, the report also drew attention to actions by some member states who deliberately place significant obstacles in the path of patients seeking treatment abroad. In some cases, this has been the result of intentional political choices. Setting hurdles for patients indefinitely is definitely the wrong approach and is harmful to our goal of improving access to quality health care in the entire EU. The European Commission has to take a strong approach to make sure <laughs> that patients are actually able to exercise their rights. It is to be welcomed that the Commissioner for Health, Vitenis Andrew Kaitis, discussed the issue with members at the Informal Health Council in Luxembourg two weeks ago and called, them and called on member states to eliminate such obstacles. He also announced further commission action to, to ensure the correct transposition of the directive in all member states. We are now waiting for concrete action by the Commission very soon. As we have seen then, the role of the EU is in coordination with member states is crucial to, further, to furthering the single market in the health sector given the fragmentation of health systems in the EU. It is essential to find a collaborative approach in order to let, deliver coherent policy outcomes and facilitate the mobility of patients and health professionals and the provision of health care services in the single market. We now need to take further action on these issues and reduce existing barriers while at the same time address the challenges we find along the way. I therefore call on my colleagues in the European Parliament, the European Commission, as well as the Member States, to take action on the barriers that patients and health professionals face when seeking or providing health care across borders. If we do it right, and if we take into account and control possible new challenges of these developments, it is an opportunity to bring down access barriers and reduce existing inequalities between member states. All these developments show that there is a clear European dimension to these issues. Although furthering the single market in the health sector is expected to improve access to health care for people with chronic conditions, it is still crucial that the EU strengthens its commitments and its collaboration with member states to tackling barriers to health care for people with RMDs and other major chronic conditions if we want to reduce the enormous burden they represent. Initiatives such as the ongoing consultation on access to health care 
or the amendments being proposed by different maps to the EU strategy on health and safety at the work 2014-2020, calling the Commission to implement concrete actions against musculoskeletal conditions in the workplace, seem to go in the right direction. But once again, we need a strategic approach and the full support of the Commission to reduce the burden of RMDs. The European Parliament will support the efforts of the Commission, as well as the efforts of stakeholder organisations such as EULAR, as long as they contribute to reducing the burden of RMDs and other major diseases. In the coming weeks, together with other MAPs, we will re-establish the European Parliament Interest Group on Rheumatic and Musculoskeletal Diseases, which worked during the previous parliamentary term. As it was in the past, we expect the new interest group to be a good forum to discuss with other EU institutions, member states' representatives and stakeholders on potential parliamentary actions aiming to contribute to the fight against musculoskeletal conditions. It will be also a good forum to follow up in the coming years on the discussion we will have today and on the policy recommendations that I hope we will result from these, from these discussions. Ladies and gentlemen, I now look forward to hearing from those at the heart of these issues during today's conference. I hope for a lively and fruitful debate on these important topics and once again want to thank you for your efforts today. Thank you for your attention.